Okay, uh, so I will tell about the situation in the Netherlands uh, regarding invasive menin meningococcal disease. Uh, first, a disclosure slide that I don't have anything to disclose. Um, so vaccination in the Netherlands, how is it uh, uh, organized now? So we have this uh, MenC vaccination. There was a, a large catch-up campaign in 2002 for all uh, 1 to 18-year-olds. Uh, quite similar to uh, what was done in the UK. And MenC vaccination is included in the national immunization program since 2002 uh, at 14 months uh, of age. So um, uh, the quadrivalent vaccination against uh, A, C, W and Y uh, is not used in our program and uh, it is used in travelers in the Netherlands. And uh, the men B vaccination, we also don't use it. It is registered in the Netherlands, uh, but actually it's not available uh, even to, to be used. So regarding uh, the surveillance of uh, meningococcal disease in the Netherlands, uh, it, it's a notifiable disease since uh, already a long time. And the case definition includes um, clinical symptoms uh, together with lab confirmation. And from these notifications, we als also have some clinical information, including mortality, clinical pre presentation, and also vaccination status. Uh, and next to that, we have the laboratory surveillance, uh, uh, which is based in, uh, at the Netherlands Reference Laboratory for Bacterial Meningitis. And they receive all uh, positive uh, CSF and blood isolates or samples from uh, all microbiology uh, labs in uh, the Netherlands. And uh, the, the diagnosis is based on culture, but also on, uh, on PCR. And they, um, uh, they uh, determine the serogroups of all those isolates, and they also do further subtyping uh, of these isolates. And we've, uh, since 2003, we ha really have an active linkage between the notifications and the lab surveillance. And uh, so we have a, uh, an, a comprehensive uh, surveillance system. And the estimated coverage of the system is more than 90%. So look at, let's look at the incidence uh, by zero group uh, in the Netherlands. So on the y-axis you see the incidence and, and the years on the, on the x-axis. And um, what, what, can y what you can notice is that the, the total uh, burden of um, uh, meningococcal disease really decreased over the, over the last years. And furthermore, you notice this peak here, uh, which we'll come back to uh, later. And in the 1990s, we actually had around 600 cases uh, per year, and that dropped to about 100 cases uh, in, the, in the last years. So really a big uh, decrease uh, of uh, meningococcal disease, uh, which was also shown by Helen. So uh, regarding, uh, let's first look have a, a short look at uh, men B. And uh, at the moment we have around 70 cases uh, per year of, of men B. And uh, it decreased uh, enormously over the last years, but it seems to be quite stable uh, at the moment. If we look at the age distribution of men B, we see that uh, the majority of cases is in the really young children, so uh, in the under five years old, so, um, and also some cases in the adolescents. So this is a really typical uh, age distribution for men B. Well, I already said about this peak. So in 2000, we had a peak of uh, men C uh, with at the, at the we had uh, 280 cases, and then uh, it was decided to introduce this MenC vaccination. And uh, right after uh, this introduction, the incidence really dropped uh, dramatically. And this is indeed mainly due to this uh, catch-up campaign, what which was done for uh, for up to 18-year-olds, and this provided this herd protection, uh, which uh, protected uh, the whole population. So at the moment, we have less than 10 cases per year uh, of MenC. And uh, we, we've only seen uh, four vaccine failure cases uh, since uh, the introduction of vaccination. <coughs> so only four cases that uh, uh, got sick um, despite vaccination. 
Well, what you see for men Y, it's, al it's almost not visible. It's the purple line. And you see that the incidence is really low. Um, we seem to see an, uh, a slight increase in the latest uh, 10 years, but um, it's quite stable. It, it's, it's not increasing a lot. And it's <laughs> about 12 cases per year, what we see now. And if we look at the age distribution, it's completely different than for the men B. Uh, a lot of uh, elderly, actually, uh, in the for men Y. So it's a, it's a different picture than for men B. So what about men W? You see that uh, also this uh, line is really low, so the, the green line. Um, and we had about four cases per year. However, you, you do already see in this graph this, this, well, this increase in 2016. And if we look a, a little bit further uh, into uh, men W, you see the on the y-axis is the number of cases. And here you see this um, slight increase around 2000, uh, which was uh, related to the heart outbreak, which uh, Helen also referred to. So <laughs> we also saw that, although it was a little bit less uh, in the Netherlands than uh, wha what was seen in the UK. Um, but you do notice the enormous increase in 2016. And if we compare, um, and we, we see already an a slight increase in 2015. So if we compare the incidents in 2015 versus uh, the 10 years before, we see an increase of uh, twofold, the, the incidence rate ratio. Uh, but if we compare 2016 versus uh, 2005, 2014, we see actually a 12-fold increase in the incidence of men W. And at the moment, 32% uh, of all the meningococcal disease uh, cases are actually men W. Well, if we take a closer look at the men W in 2015 and 2016, on the y-axis you see the cumulative number of <laughs> cases, and you see that it started to increase around um, October 2015. So in the autumn of 2015, we started to see this sudden uh, increase. And um, since October 2015, we have now uh, seen 44 cases of men W. And I want to look in into these 44 cases a little bit more. So if we look at the age distribution of these 44 cases, we see that the majority actually is uh, 65 um, years or older. But we also see um, some cases in the, in the adolescents and also the young adults. And um, not, not so much in the uh, under five years. And if we look at the uh, clinical presentation, we see um, uh, a more or less a similar picture as in, as in the UK, that uh, there's quite a lot of sepsis, and not so much meningitis actually, and really a lot of other, um, other presentations other than sepsis and meningitis. And if we uh, look into those, we see that it's um, a pneumonia or a mild uh, a disease uh, presentation or mild disease uh, course, and two cases of septic arthritis. About this uh, gastrointestinal symptoms that you presented, we don't have an indication that we have it in the Netherlands, uh, but I think also our surveillance system at the moment is not really uh, app to to really detect that, so we don't really know if if the, if something is going on there. But we didn't have any um, reports from uh, from physicians uh, on that yet. So, but it's something, of course, to look uh, further into. So, if we look at some other characteristics, we see uh, we've seen uh, three uh, deaths until now. Uh, resulting in a case fatality rate of 8%. And for comparison, for men B, we had a case fatality rate of around 3% over the last uh, few years. So it is larger, but the numbers are, of course, really small uh, to say something about that. We've seen no related uh, cases. Uh, we have no not seen geographical clustering, so the cases are spread uh, across the country. 
and uh, they are not particularly uh, travel related and uh, also not related to refugees. We had one case in an asylum seeking center, but it's not uh, focused on those uh, uh, people. Uh, what about the strain? So uh, Helen also talked about that. And um, uh, actually what, uh, what the reference laboratory, laboratory uh, uh, does, uh, uh, yeah, always does, is uh, fine typing of the strains. And uh, uh, it appeared that about 90% uh, of all the strains of MenW were of this similar fine type. Um, and um, this fine type is also really closely linked to this uh, colonial complex CC11. And actually all the strains that have been uh, whole genome sequenced uh, with this fine type also belong to this clonal complex 11. So that's really close, uh, yeah, it's really related to each other. And um, well, if we, uh, we go to the next picture, um, Helen already introduced this uh, uh, very nicely. So. Um, what we uh, what this picture shows is actually the Dutch strains in this whole picture. So on the on the right side you see um, the uh, original uh, UK strain. So that, that was uh, what Helen also presented. So these are all um, South American WCC11 genomes uh, that are uh, in this uh, in this um, publicly available uh, database. And here we see this uh, this original UK strain, and this is actually this new uh, UK uh, strain, the uh, 2013 uh, strain. And if we look at the at the Dutch cases, actually the the the, the colored um, the, the colored lines or the the colored dots are the are the Dutch cases, and the colors refer to the different uh, epidemiological years. And also, uh, of course, we had only a few cases in in uh, in the earlier years, and you see that uh, that those uh, are uh, are in this uh, in this uh, sublineage, so in this original UK strain. But you see also that the recent all the recent uh, cases in the Netherlands belong to this new uh, UK strain, and they are very closely uh, linked together. So, well, the big question, are we following the, the, the UK? Well, if we first look at the, uh, at the incidence and compare it between uh, England and the Netherlands, uh, the, the blue line is, uh, is uh, the men W incidence in England and the red line is in the Netherlands. And uh, what, is, what, what can be noticed is that we are uh, indeed about two years behind. So if we compare the incidence at uh, epidemiological year 2015-16, uh, uh, with the data in the UK, we see that it's uh, well. We there is a lag of two years. And furthermore, what you could, what you can see is that in the UK, the increase was a little bit more gradual. So um, they saw increases in a few years, and then it went up uh, steeply. And we had really a sudden increase in, in, in the last epidemiological year. And this, 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 in this more steeper increase may be due to the fact that we see this 2013 strain, um, which seemed to be more uh, virulent than the, than the original UK strain. And if we look at the historical situation with men C, we actually uh, see also that, that there was a two-year gap between the peak incidence in the Netherlands and in England. So uh, it, it seems to follow the same picture as uh, with men C. If we look at the age distribution of men W in England and the Netherlands, we also see quite a similar picture. Um, also in the UK, at the beginning, there were uh, mostly the elderly, and later on, there came the, the, the adolescents and also the under five-year-olds. And we also see mainly now the elderly, and uh, there has already been uh, an increase uh, in the number of cases in the adolescents. And so if we compare the age distribution now in the Netherlands with uh, two years um, 
uh, ago for England, it looks quite similar. So, uh, yeah, it all seems to be, uh, be, be, be quite similar to each other. And also if we compare the clinical presentation, the first bar represents the MENW in England, the second bar the MENW in the Netherlands, and you see that, that it's also quite a similar distribution, although we, we have a little bit less uh, sepsis and a little bit more of these other presentations. Uh, but in comparison with men B, where we see uh, a lot of meningitis, it's, it's, uh, this is really a, a different picture, and the men W in the England and the Netherlands look quite, uh, quite similar. So what about other European countries? Um, well, only sp actually only Spain really um, published on, on an increase in men W. And uh, the information from the other countries is, also on, uh, is all uh, by personal communication and uh, obtained during a, a, a meeting in Frankfurt two weeks ago where, where several European countries presented their data. And actually, there uh, a lot of countries uh, do see an increase. Um, and uh, but there are also some countries who don't see an increase. So that's also interesting why that is the case. But... Um, the increases seem not to be as large as in the Netherlands. So uh, this, this, this um, trend, uh, what was it, 12-fold increase that we see, um, I didn't get the in, uh, impression that that was also so large in the other countries. But what the, uh, the countries with an increase do see is that the proportion of this CC11, this clonal complex 11, is really high, uh, up to 100% in some countries. So there seems to be uh, things going on in, whole, uh, in the whole of Europe, but apparently we are the f one of the first to see it after the UK. So uh, in conclusion, we've seen that uh, men B has been decreasing uh, over, uh, over the last years and seems to be quite stable at the moment. The men C incidence we see is, is very low, with only a few cases uh, per year. Um, but we do see this rapid increase of this hypervirulent uh, men W strain since the autumn of 2015. And uh, we see rather similar characteristics of this men, men W increase in the UK and the Netherlands. And maybe we see a little bit more rapid increase in the Netherlands due to this new UK, UK strain that we mainly see in the Netherlands. And um, the actions that we've already taken uh, around this uh, increase, of course, we closely monitor uh, the situation and um, g uh, gathering most recent data. Uh, we uh, also had two uh, meetings of the response team at the RVM to discuss the situation and, and uh, look what the, wha what the current uh, status was. And uh, we also informed the Health Council about this increase and uh, shared these data and um, asked them to prioritize uh, uh, yeah, an, an advice on, on uh, uh, what to do with this uh, situation. And also we asked them to give an integrated advice on uh, men, men B and men C for adolescents, which uh, Mariette will talk uh, about more, and also this increase on, uh, on men W, how to, uh, what to do with this. Um, so I want to acknowledge uh, these persons that contributed to this presentation. Thank you for, for your attention.